Heavenly Father, Joseph faced one round after another temptation. Things that simply got in his way of trying to do your will. But Lord, you worked mightily in Joseph to push him away from that temptation that could have caused massive damage and problems. And Lord, be with us in the times when we face temptation. You would point us in the way that is pleasing to you and that would be blessing to others. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, imagine what Hollywood could do with the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. A man of exceptional qualities, dreams from God. He was able to interpret the dreams of others. Handsome, a victim of his brother's rage, rises from the absolute depths of despair to a place of honor and glory in a foreign country, forgiving people who wronged him, a forgiving, tearful reunion between a loving father and a long-lost son. That is just the kind of man a Hollywood movie could fall in love with and the people who watched it could absolutely love. But there is one part to Joseph's life that does not fit a modern Hollywood plot. He could have had an affair with a very prominent Egyptian woman, but he turns her down. Now, that would probably be more of an exception than the rule in our world today. You know why? Because Joseph's life is not a Hollywood movie plot. It's the story about the life of someone who came to be a chosen instrument of God. God was going to work through Joseph to preserve his people, the ones from whom the Savior would come. God was with Joseph. He blessed him. He gave Joseph a God-fearing and God-loving spirit. That's why he was able to resist the temptation brought on by Potiphar's wife, a story I guarantee you you did not hear when you were a child in Sunday school. If only we could be like Joseph in resisting that kind of temptation. How could I do then such a wicked thing and sin against God? So where can we find that same resistance, no matter what the temptation may be? Well, let's answer that by actually rephrasing Joseph's question here a bit. Temptation? How could I resist? How could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? This is an outstanding testimony from a God-fearing man. And it's a question where the answer is actually quite clearly given. Joseph knew the answer could only be this. You can't, you must not, and you dare not do this. You love God too much to give in to something like this. God loves you, and God blesses you, Joseph. He is with you to give you strength through all this. But I'll tell you, it had to be tempting for Joseph to go ahead and sin with Potiphar's wife. Joseph had been put in charge of nearly everything in Potiphar's household. He'd been on the good side of this powerful Egyptian person for quite some time. He was absolutely above suspicion. But now, Joseph and Potiphar's wife were alone. Joseph had been through a lot of heartache in his life already. He was away from his family, away from his beloved homeland. This powerful woman desired him greatly. How easily could Joseph have said, go to bed with you? How could I resist? Why not? But Joseph has become a model for us by the way in which he handled that temptation. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? This believer listened to his conscience. This would be a sin against the God who had prospered him, who had kept him safe. He was God who was with him. Go to bed with you. How, how can I resist this, Lord? As if to say, no way. And can we be like that? Absolutely. Are we always like that? Well, that kind of depends on the temptation. <laughs> 
and our frame of mind at the time. I mean, how often do we deal with temptation the way that we deal with a luscious, wonderful looking dessert? Oh, another piece of chocolate cake? How can I resist? Oh, another scoop of ice cream on top? Hey, why not? We can usually have another scoop without any real damage. But giving in to sin is always harmful to ourselves, our bodies, and our souls. So that's why we reframe Joseph's question in this way. Temptation? How can I resist, O oh Lord? We'll say no to him. We get ourselves ready to fight it. Joseph didn't even allow the thought of going that direction with Potiphar's wife to enter his mind. He verbalized his conviction and the appropriate action that quickly followed. Joseph knew the consequences would be quick and great. Getting into Potiphar's wife would be a wicked thing. So he looked for ways somehow to avoid that temptation. In fact, it got to the point he wouldn't even go near Potiphar's wife once he realized what she was really after. But Potiphar's wife kept pouring on more temptation. She became aggressive. Joseph continued to resist her. And finally that day when the two of them were alone, he ran from her as she grabbed his cloak and made accusations. He paid a price. He ended up isolated in prison. But, but the price he paid was worth the actions he took resisting her temptation. Because there's a rest of the story. God would use his time in prison to elevate Joseph to an even greater place in Egypt. Do we always realize the consequences, what they can be when we give in to temptation? It's often more than being forced to sit in the corner. I'll give me an example of this. I think sometimes we're like the Arctic wolf. Local tribes up north, um, Alaska and northern Canada, can catch them without ever even having to hunt them down. Here's what they do. They would get a super sharp blade, put meat on that blade, and the wolf did all the rest of the work. The wolf would come and eat the meat directly off the blade. It would lick that blade clean, not even realizing it was slicing its tongue as it did so. As they bled out, the wheat became weak. The wolf became weak or vulnerable. And then it was dealt with. It would often bleed to death. That wolf that often took the lives of the stock for the tribe was so caught up in, I've got to eat this meat, it had no idea what it was doing to itself. And that's where we can end up if we're not always watchful. We don't realize that harm that we're actually causing ourselves or others. And that's why God in his love for us gave us his law, rules about right and wrong. The law is not meant to absolutely push us down to a pulp. It's actually meant to keep us and others from harm. It's a gift. Joseph knew that if he gave in to Potiphar's wife, that he'd be sinning against her, her husband, himself, and against God. So he refused to give in. Now and then, I'll see a team sport a slogan, refuse to lose. So, can that work a temptation? In this case, it's really important to ask the question about temptation in the right way. Temptation? How, Lord, how can I, how can I resist? We know we're going to lose that battle from time to time. In fact, every day, even if we tell ourselves, I refuse to lose. So we have to learn to answer that question. How, Lord, can I resist? Do you remember what Jesus said to his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night that he was betrayed? He told them, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but our flesh is weak. Now, Jesus went through what he did so that you and I would not have to deal with that punishment we deserved. We cannot win the battle against temptation by ourselves. Nor could Joseph win the battle by himself. He knew that because he was a broken person too. Even if maybe we don't see it a lot in his life, it's still there. He's just as broken as you and I are. 
He deserved the punishment that Jesus would eventually bear for him as well. You see, Jesus came to this earth to defeat the devil. The one who won a huge battle in the Garden of Eden, he told the Adam and Eve to take a shortcut, eat that forbidden fruit. And the tactics the devil used all the way back at the beginning of time, they're the same ones he still uses with us today. And with Jesus in the wilderness. Ah, just don't worry about your father's plan. Do your own thing. Take a shortcut. But Jesus used his father's words to put the devil in his place. Jesus not only won that battle out in the wilderness, better yet, he won the ultimate victory for us on the cross. And he sealed it by rising from the dead. We find power and strength to overcome temptation <clears throat> as we look at our Savior's victory for us. It's our motivation for resisting. Just as God's love, love for Joseph helped him and helped him move on. And man, we need God's power like that in our lives every day. Imagine this. If I told you this morning, facetious, if I told you this morning that whether or not you are saved depended on how well you dealt with temptation, let's say a 90% success rate to get into heaven, could any of us rest assured that we'd ever get there? No way. The victory, the assurance of the forgiveness of our sin and eternal life rests with God and what He's already done for us in Jesus Christ. He has done everything that is needed for us. So we fight the battle of temptation every day with the victory already in hand. Yeah, the battles are going to come. But the one who's been defeated, Satan, is still going to try and yank that from us. But the Lord has not left us to fight alone. Just as Jesus used that word of God to show the devil he was wrong, and that God's words were right, we have this tremendous gift of God's word to use against Satan today. How could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? We have the power of prayer. It focuses our mind and our attention right back on the Lord. He's on our side. We have that voice inside us. It's called a conscience. That tells us whether we're acting according to what is right or wrong. That voice moved Joseph to cry out, How could I? But it doesn't end there. We've also been given strength, even stronger than that little guy, but nourishment to build our strength in the gospel, in the gift of baptism, in the gift of our Lord's Supper. God's Spirit is alive. He's active within each of us. We have examples in the Bible. Peter, like Paul, people like Joseph, John, and Paul. We have the testimony of those who died while sharing their faith and love of Jesus. We look around. We have fellow followers of Jesus here to lift each other up. God gave each of us a brain that tells us when to run away, just as Joseph did with Potiphar's wife. We have the promises of God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, or this one from 1 Corinthians 10. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. We have confidence in our Lord who allows us to say, as Martin Luther wrote, one little word can fell him, the devil. And by the way, that word is Jesus. It could be as simple as the word no. Have you ever tried to hold in a cough when you have a cold without the use of any medicine? Have you just tried to block the whole thing out of your mind? I know that's the way I generally try, but it's hard to do. Because sooner or later, that cough's going to sneak out. Eventually, the cough medicine is necessary to control it. How about an itch you get from poison ivy? Been there, done that. You try to control it, but you can't. And what do you do? Mom always told you, don't scratch it. Then it gets worse. So you have to put something on it. Temptation is just like that. It keeps coming back. We can make it worse. But when it comes to temptation, we look to Jesus, and the temptation will be covered. 
use Jesus' love for us, given on the cross, when you have made things worse by giving in to temptation. The cross and the empty tomb are the only proven cure. Jesus won forgiveness and life for us in the midst of temptation in a messy, broken world. It cost him his life. But in its place, he brings you and me life to the full. How can we resist that? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.